All right, welcome to the review of Phoenix 6 Titanium Pro Sapphire. I don't know, there's way too many names for it, but obviously I think uh, there's run or more than 10 varieties of Phoenix 6 that you can buy right now. Anyway, the version that I've got here is a Phoenix 6 uh, Titanium. The one that has a 46 uh, millimeter or 47 millimeter as advertised on the website. But as I think on the box it says 46 millimeter. The titanium band, this was a little bit expensive than the regular Phoenix um, 6 Pro. Also has a sapphire glass and uh, it's got a titanium back as well, I think. Yeah, and a titanium bezel, of course. Uh, this is watch, I have to uh, let you know guys, is a little bit lighter than the regular Phoenix models, Phoenix 6 models, because it's got all titanium uh, bezel and titanium back. So let's get into the review um, after three months of usage. I've had it for, I think, more than three months. And I believe it's a good time to, you know, uh, get out a review that talks about a lot of things. So let's get into it right away. So I've spoken about this in my previous videos, but I want to speak about this again, uh, just a little bit about accuracy. Um, you know, the accuracy pertaining to GPS or uh, heart rate and uh, regular metrics in general. I think Phoenix, as, as all Garmin watches are, is very accurate in providing a lot of metrics. Uh, in the sense that uh, they have been very accurate in the past with a lot of watches, but they haven't been very accurate when it comes to strength training. But this new sensor with the two LEDs with another pulse ox LEDs or the version three of the Elevate Garmin heart rate sensor is a bit better in that uh, in, in that uh, in that regards. Uh, I think they made a lot of improvements um, in, in the heart rate sensor criteria, and I'm very excited to talk about them. Uh, today in this review so what's the what's the best thing about this hardware sensor is that any uh activity such as a strength training or a crossfit training activity it tracks very close to um, a chest heart rate monitor not as close but what i'm saying is uh, the keyword is very close but not as close so i would always put it in uh four to five beats uh difference in terms of accuracy with a chest heart rate strap but that's not bad when compared to the previous generation which used to be at the very least uh, 20, 30 heartbeats uh, difference. So in this case, this is pretty good. Um, uh, but there is a bug with the heart rate sensor. So I'll talk about it a little bit later in the disadvantages. Now coming back to GPS accuracy, how accurate is it? I'll just show you how accurate it is in terms of GPS. And I, and I can speak to the accuracy because I live in this part of the world uh, where I was jogging and I am pretty sure that, sure of my run. So this is, a run that I let's focus a little bit here. There you go. Atta boy. So this is a run that I went on for around three to four kilometers, I think, uh, in Victoria, and uh, it's pretty close to accurate. I would say close to ninety nine percent accurate. I don't know how to focus on this, but the light is way too heavy. I hope it focuses on, but I'll go back in this case. In any case, uh, GPS is very accurate, is what I'm getting at. In other senses, now getting back to uh, other metrics, other metrics such as uh, the ones that are offered by First Beat uh, that are included in this watch, uh, other metrics that are offered also by having a heart rate sensor such as Garmin uh, heart rate sensors like uh, HRM Tri that can, that can give you a lot more metrics than a regular uh, running watch uh, that Garmin has. Um, I think those metrics are also offered by Forerunner uh, side of the watches, but also by Phoenix as well. So let's look at a run uh, that I did uh, quite a while ago with this Phoenix plus a Garmin heart rate Tri, HRM Tri monitor. Okay, names are pretty confusing, but here we go. So, as you can see, the same run, I'm using it for this example. The pace metrics are actually pretty accurate or pretty close to being accurate. I stopped a couple of times or more than a couple of times at, uh, at, at red lights. So I was actually running in downtown. And then heart rate, you can see that it's pretty accurate, but I mean, you can't see that it's accurate, but I was wearing a heart rate strap. So I'd assume that it's pretty accurate. You've got performance condition, which was really bad in my case. It just went down as a run went down. You have training effect. This is a metric that uh, that you had even in Phoenix 5 series or 5 plus series. And then you have cadence, uh, which was okay. 
in my case, you know, stride length. This is something that, that you get with HRM Try monitors like HRM Try or HRM Run that gives you, or a Garmin foot part. Uh, stride length is average, pretty good. Vertical ratio, average. Uh, vertical oscillation, also average. Uh, ground contact time, which is very accurate, or at least I feel like, uh, which is very good, 50-50. Uh, ground contact time and you got a respiration rate. This was not present in the Phoenix 5 or 5 plus This is something new here. You got elevation plot uh, temperature and then heart rate zones. Let's also look at uh, Strength training accurately because I just was speaking about strength training as an advantage for this new uh, Heart rate sensor that's on Phoenix 6. So you can as you can see the average heart rate here is 102 anything above 100 uh, I feel is a little bit close to accurate than than not so as you can see here, it also shows pretty good or um, it, it tracks heart rate well during the set. So you can see a lot of spikes and troughs, uh, crests and troughs here. That's because of the set. Uh, there's one gripe though. I'll, I'll talk about it later, but also I'll mention something else related to it. But uh, the, the locking of the heart rate is a little bit slower in my opinion, but it's not that slow. It does get to accurate um uh, it does it does clo come close to accurate i think in five to ten seconds but catching on to it is a little bit slower in my opinion but you know uh heart rate sensors uh, wrist heart rate sensors are all like that uh so it's, it's not really a big complaint but that's something that government can improve on and then you've got training effect even for strength training you've got all the rest of the metrics in any case so moving on to uh, build quality. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about the build quality, guys, because you know that this is the number one selling point. Uh, build quality for Phoenix. Phoenix watches have a reputation to be uh, very durable, uh, long lasting, can take a beating, uh, and I can attest to that. And I've had this watch for three months and I've hit it so badly to walls and to everything that I could find runs, trails, nothing. There are small minor scratches, but uh, absolutely nothing when it comes to uh, visibility. You can't see it, to be honest, even though the video is not that, um, not that there's, there's not much light here, you can't actually st still see. I can attest to that at the very least. Uh, and then how about the looks? When it comes to the looks, I feel like Phoenix uh, in all of Garmin, I think Phoenix and also the Vivo Active series in Garmin, the Vivo Active 4 series and the 3 series as well, are the most um, or the best looking watches uh, in terms of uh, in, in terms of uh, wearing it in to any occasion. So because with these watches, you have something called a quick fit mechanism right here. You can just uh, flop it off. So whenever I go to office or a formal setting, I just use this titanium band that I got with it, or you can use any off market metal band. And whenever I go to gym, I use uh, the orange band that came with this, or I actually have two other or three other off-market uh, silicone bands that I use with it. So this fits in any occasion and it doesn't uh, come out like a sports watch. So not a lot of people, if you don't know about Phoenix lineup uh, or Garmin watches in general, you wouldn't notice that it's a, it's not an analog watch and it's a sports watch. People just, by the looks of it, if, if you had at the first glance, you, would actually, you wouldn't actually know that this is a sports watch. It, anyway, coming back again to battery life. So the battery life claims for Garmin are 12 days in smartwatch mode. Uh, it is close to that, but it's not as close uh, to 12 days. I, I can say that it, with uh, regular usage, one strength training and one uh, 10 minute treadmill run, let's say for example, you can get uh, close to eight to nine days of battery. So, which is not bad at all. Most smartwatches actually require you to charge within one or two days. So this is much better. Garmin actually stands out in battery life and if and you know, if I didn't use it for strength training or if not for running and if I just used it for notifications and as such and just uh, regular uh, metric tracking like steps and uh, calories, um, I'm pretty sure I would have gotten 11 to 12 days. So in that case, battery life, uh, big thumbs up. And then coming to uh, some of the new features, what's new in, um, in, in, in this series uh, to what's not there in Phoenix 5 Plus or 5 Series so is something called Pace Pro. If I go to run and uh, I, I go to run settings and I can actually choose pace pro I think or actually you'd have to set up the pace pro um, uh, on your phone yes sorry my bad but again you can get into the run screens and you can just see a lot of things that are offered for running um, and so you could set up a pace pro plan. Uh, I only set it up once and um, it was not really 
uh, my thing actually. I, I can I can live without Pace Pro, but some people might have it useful for uh, racing. But uh, you can have Pace Pro. That's the most newest feature, and I think uh, the heart rate sensor, the updated heart rate sensor, is one other thing, and also the display. It actually looks really, really good. I actually like this display better than the Phoenix 5 Plus. Also, I don't know if they changed anything in the resolution, but they obviously changed in terms of uh, cutting down the black bezel surrounding the display, which makes the display look really good. And uh, it's a it, it, it's something, it's, uh, Garmin calls it memory in pixel display. Color, full color memory in pixel display. Uh, not as uh, good looking as a Samsung or Apple watches, but um, doesn't look bad either. Uh, this is one of the features or factors to conserving the battery life on phoenix and actually i don't mind it i see it looks good it looks average it looks you know for a sports watch uh you know that 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 has a battery life of close to 10 days um you know i can live with that display uh so <clears throat> moving on to um any other features that are actually good the first beat metrics i think they've added to a respiration rate uh you can just scroll um, you can see these widgets. Also, the widgets are new. Uh, not the widgets are new, but the placement or the display of the widgets, how they're, they're called widget glances. Uh, they look much neater than <clears throat> having one widget per page. You can just see a or at a glance three widgets per page and they're neatly organized that way. And then you've, uh, you also can have Spotify. Yeah, you also have music on this. I mean, it's also there on the 5 Plus, but you've got here. You've also got Pulse Ox. Uh, you can track that pulse ox. I think the pulse ox that it's showing is what it tracked um, in in sleep yesterday. So it takes a while to get the reading. Uh, if you're uh, you have to hold it steady and everything, but um, I'm moving way too much, so I don't think uh, it'll I'll get any reading. There you go, TikTok notification. Anyway, uh, again moving back, I have some other uh, Garmin Connect um, uh, Garmin Connect widget. Uh, such as this battery life uh, predictor. I only have one widget actually. This is one widget that I uh, very much like and uh, it just predicts how long battery, I mean how much more battery is left and uh, how long you can survive. But you don't have to depend on that because this watch comes with a prediction here. So a battery, even though it says 76, I can change the settings to uh, say uh, how how many days I can have of a battery life. So you can, you can move between battery percentage or how many days you have left in that. That's new. And then uh, usually the watch faces are new. They look much cleaner and better uh, uh, than the 5 or 5 Plus series. And what else is new? Yeah, that's about it. I think that's 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 something new about this uh, model. And then coming back to the disadvantages, and I did say that there is a bug. There is a bug, big bug. <laughs> I combined big and bug. But anyway, there is a big bug um, that I hope Garmin addresses. And I'm not sure if they're going to address it because it's been more than four months that they've launched this and they haven't yet had a look at it. Is when you do strength training, um, and then you turn the strength or cardio in general, to be honest, uh, except for runs and steady state cardio, for some reason, uh, for the first few minutes, the heart rate spikes quite a bit. See what I'll, I'll explain that, and I have evidence to uh, back that up. Is you see this, uh, you see this reading there. This is a heart rate um, here, right here. I was not doing any warm up here. I was actually just starting pretty cold, I, it was just a rainy day, I got to the gym, uh, took off my jacket and then just started working out. And the heart rate was pretty high at that moment. It was 100, and, it was reaching 130 to 140, which um, is, 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 is to be honest, silly, but it does catch on again after a few minutes. I think in this case, it was around five to six minutes until it caught on, but that's, that's a pretty big bug to have. And it's not just one strength training activity. I can just show on and on a lot of strength training activities that were, um, that I had, you can see here another strength training activity. Here, I think it doesn't show, the bug is not existent because I think I had a warm up uh, before this, but let's get to a strength training. Uh, another example. Let's get to this one. Let's see, right here, you can see that. Now you can see that, that's the spike. That's the spike that I'm talking about, the first uh, five or six minutes. I hope Garmin addresses this. I don't know if it's a software bug or it's a hardware, but I'm guessing it's a software bug. So please Garmin, if you're looking at this, which <laughs> I'm sure you're not, but um, I hope the word gets around of this bug and I hope this gets posted in forums all over the place. But this is a big bug that Garmin has to address. Anyway, what is the other disadvantage? I think the other disadvantage is right in the face, guys. The price, the price of this watch in Canadian dollars is absolutely ridiculous. It's 1400 bucks. 
but I bought it. <laughs> I must be stupid, right? Yeah, I am pretty stupid. I guess I'm a sucker for um, these watches. But anyway, uh, the price uh, is a big, big disadvantage. You know, this offers a lot. The watch offers a lot. The watch, um, this watch you know, has a lot of features, has everything under the sun, uh, except for, uh, let's say, uh, electrocardiogram. I'm sure in the next Phoenix 7 or 8, they probably have that. But coming to the price, I don't know, you know, people might want to buy. I mean, I don't think this can be mass sold or mass produced. People will buy it probably when it comes down a little bit, you know, under $1,000 or it's actually under $1,000 if you want to buy the base model. But the base models do not have music, guys. It's almost like a Phoenix 5, not even a 5 Plus. It's like a Phoenix 5. You're paying more than a Phoenix 5 Plus, but you're still not getting music. That's ridiculous to be honest. And if you want to get a Sapphire model, nothing is less than thousand bucks or actually close to thousand bucks. So uh, if Garmin is listening, I think, you know, you can cut down on some fancy features like first beat metrics that nobody cares about, or you can cut down in the activities. You know, you got so many activities when I go here and I'm not sure if that costs you any money, but probably in R&D at least it might cost you money. You could just take off a lot of things, man. Um, and I believe Garmin can do a much better job in removing all the extra unused features. They probably have some stat analysis that can uh, gather that for them and uh, re probably hopefully reduce the price. Anyway, all in all, this is a very, very, very good watch for a niche market, I believe. And not a niche market, maybe now things are a bit changing a lot. I see a lot of Phoenixes around, but uh, a very good uh, watch if you have the money and if you have the time to spend on all the activities that Phoenix 6 has to offer. Because if you want to do all the activities on Phoenix 6, it'll probably take a year to do each activity at once. In any case, very good improvement from 5 and 5 Plus series. Uh, price a little bit higher, uh, better accuracy uh, with a big bug, like I explained. The rest of it is all good. All right, that's it, guys. That's the review of Phoenix 6 after three months of usage. A thumbs up. I wouldn't say a big, big thumbs up, but a, a good thumbs up for this um, for this watch here. And I'll be using this for the rest of the year, uh, plus maybe even more, even, even a little more until Phoenix 7 or 7 Plus comes out. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this extended review, please give a thumbs up so I can make uh, many more reviews uh, and extensively test Garmin's tech and also other tech in general. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.